The Council of Europe was born amid the ruins of war with a vision, never again. In place of war, there would be friendship. In place of hatred, pride in what was shared. The nations of Europe would learn to live and work together in harmony and prosperity without frontiers. Winston Churchill led the way in a speech in 1946. The first practical step would be to form a council of Europe. Therefore, I say to you, let Europe arise. going a bit too quickly for me. Excuse me? Yes? Sure, Shethel. I'm trying to watch the film. No, George. I'm sorry, but can we go back a bit? Go back? Well, I suppose so. <laughs> well, I was just wondering, who started this Council of Europe? Well, after World War II, there was a conference at The Hague. A thousand delegates from different countries came together to discuss the future. They called for an elected assembly, a European convention on human rights and a court to enforce it. In 1949, ten countries met in London to sign the founding treaty of the Council of Europe and they decided to set up here. But why Strasbourg? Because it was a symbol. The French and Germans have been fighting over it for centuries. Where better to start sorting out Europe's problems? But there are a lot more members now, right? Another 37 in just over 50 years. There are now 47 members. Ah, so this is it, the European Parliament. Uh, no, you're thinking of the European Union. This is the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. It's the oldest political organization on the continent. There's a whole question of safeguards, a whole system of international safeguards. But I still don't see what the difference is. Well, some countries wanted to have closer political and economic ties, so they began to develop a common market together, which eventually became the European Union. Each of those EU members is a member of the Council of Europe too, and they have the same values but different roles. So, while the EU develops and grows, the Council of Europe is concentrating on its own special mission. And that is? Keeping the peace, setting standards for democracy and human rights. When the Berlin Wall came down in 1989, for example, we were able to help new members down the path to democracy. And, as members, they committed to uphold these standards of democracy and law which have been developed over the past 50 years. Impressive? But how does it all actually work? Well, let's start with the Committee of Ministers. It's like the executive body of the Council and is made up of foreign ministers from each country. However, in day-to-day -day business, the work is done by ambassadors and their deputies, who are based permanently in Strasbourg. So they make all the decisions? No, there are two other bodies who help with the decision-making. The first one is the Parliamentary Assembly, the democratic voice of the Council, which is made up of parliamentarians from the different members. The other body is the Congress, 
which brings together representatives from towns and cities. They both meet regularly to address all concerns at local and national level. Then there are specialised areas, such as the work of the Human Rights Commissioner, who works to ensure that all the members of the Council of Europe treat their citizens in an equal and just manner. We can just no longer accept that young people, the children, are beaten and battered. And there are close to 2,000 staff from all over Europe who keep the whole thing going. And a Secretary General who's democratically elected to oversee Discuss everything we do. Decide as equals how to further European unity. Yes, but it's Europe, isn't it? Everyone follows the rules now. There can't be that much left to do. Tell that to the Court of Human Rights. 47 judges busy with cases from all across Europe. It's a sanctuary for anyone who feels deprived of justice and who can't get satisfaction in their own national courts. This is one of our most powerful actions, making sure on the basis of the Human Rights Convention that everyone is treated justly and fairly by their own country. Hang on a minute. What's a convention, and where did this Human Rights Convention come from? A convention is a sort of contract that's passed by the Council and signed up for by its members. Of these, the Convention on Human Rights, signed in 1950, is the best known. When the Council was founded, after all, Europeans desperately needed to be safe, free and protected. This was the first solution, the European Convention on Human Rights. What other conventions do you have then? Well, there are quite a lot actually. The Council of Europe has over 200 conventions on issues ranging from the protection of cultural heritage to ethical issues such as a ban on human cloning. Minorities have been given a voice. Those who've suffered in any way could all have their day in court. Oh, but isn't it a bit late by then? Well, we also try to make sure it doesn't happen at all. Anyone who's vulnerable, prisoners, psychiatric patients, asylum detainees, are visited by experts from our anti-torture committee to make sure they're being treated humanely. So, the council is basically about keeping everybody in line, doing the right thing. Now you're getting it! Is that it then? Hardly! Stopping organised crime? So the council does that too? Internet crime. Medicines. Stopping fake medicines. No! And human trafficking. The Council also does what it can to improve the lives of Europeans and helps us to become more tolerant of one another. That's what we do. We identify problems, we talk, then we act. It all sounds so serious, though. Do you have, well, a lighter side? Yes, we help our citizens visit each other. The green card, one for all car insurance for all our members, that's ours. And then there's Interrail, which allows your kids to travel cheaply wherever they want to, all over Europe. We help finance feature films. Hey, I saw that film. It was really good. And we publish journals and books on many issues ranging from human rights to cultural heritage. And then, of course, there's our European Youth Centre, which provides a place for young people to come together and say what they want for Europe's future. We promote unity. <laughs> But we also honour diversity. That the government of Israel. And for me personally. In an undivided Europe, we must be able to hang on to our different traditions and identities without being bullied by majorities or mass culture. This is why we do our best to protect Europe's languages and...